in progress. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're past the idea of gridding. I think all of you are really ready to do your, your regular drawing. Um, in this particular case, what I want you to be aware of as we're starting, and you can see this is a pretty good candidate for watercolor because there's so much white here, right? And because the feathers are kind of simple, right? There's not so many patterns, which I think will make it, makes it harder. Somebody was asking the other day, kind of what's, what makes a good subject. And so we went over a bunch. I'm happy to give you the talk if you want to, but I think you guys pretty much know. Don't I forget this paper doesn't really like pastel very much. So there's this part. Uh, maybe just little bags as we get started. Okay. What's you working on tonight, Diana? I don't know. I mean, I didn't finish the cat, but I don't feel like finishing the cat tonight. Why don't you work on this guy? He's cute. Well, maybe I maybe I will yeah. so, make it a tiny one. Just a couple of things. And one is as we look at this. Here, I'm going to use a pink marker, which I think will be easier to see. But as we look at the height, you know, from the shortest to the longest point, let's see. The halfway point is here, right? So I always like to find my vertical distance first, and then I can use this, let's see, yep, exactly. So this distance from here to here is the same as half of the height. So that's why we figure out the height. So you can see I'm marking, checking, right? And now um, I know that if I want to, that my bird is as wide as half the height across the center. So I like, these parameters are helpful just as you're starting your sketch. So as I'm starting my little chickadee, notice that the beak is out a little farther than this halfway point, right? The beak sticks out a little bit more. Notice that the head starts to come down. Notice that this is almost a straight line. Oh, wait, went down way too far. And that there's this kind of <coughs> funky negative space, which will help you kind of shape out the bottom. So that's what I'm working first. As I'm starting to sketch out this bird, maybe I need to come out a little bit more this way. I like to think of this process almost as like carving.
think that's looking pretty good. Up, oh, nope, tail's too thick. I'm using my paint from Sunday. <laughs> that's on my palette. It's still dry? It's still wet? Yeah, I'll put plastic over it. Wow. Not not all of them are okay, but most of them are. Interesting. Are you using the golden open? No. Interesting. I use I use my um, Rowney Rowney system. Dealer Rowney. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Who knew? And I'm sketching in this. And these, sorry. It's a fat little thing. Are you calling my bird fat? Yeah. <laughs> I know, I love him. I'm just like in love with him. We actually did this for ink on Saturday and it was, Thoroughly charming. Uh huh. Very charming. <laughs> there we go. So that's kind of the first step. That's not really the first step. It's the first like of several steps. But start with these outdoor shapes. Notice I've created a little kind of box around my berries so I can get them a little bit more. It's sort of sitting on one of the berries, isn't it? <clears throat> it's definitely sitting on one of the berries. He thinks it's an egg. Here we go. The key is that this distance from here to here is right, like half the vertical distance. So that's kind of how you get your, your width and your height. I'm adjusting just a little bit. So before we you go further, send it over. I haven't drawn it yet. What's Sorry. that? Just have my boss on the phone to me. Oh, no, texting me, so. Don't worry. We're going slow. Cool. Okay. What I was saying, Rollo, is get the outer shape first. And notice that this vertical distance, of which this is the halfway, that at the very halfway point of the bird, he's half the width that he is the height. See that? Okay. Here. Yeah. Half. There. Okay, Paul, pay attention to where things are. The beak is above the halfway point. You have it below. This is the lowest point of the bird. Nothing really Big comes bird, yeah. Yeah, redraw, reorient. Get your head in the game. <laughs> Thank you. 
Once you really get used to this method of drawing, you will wonder how anybody could draw any other way. Evaluating measurement just makes things a hundred million times easier. Maybe 200 million times easier. then you don't get the excitement of painting it over. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Some of you masochists like to do that. <laughs> I'll be right back. You know, the thing is, Diana, some people can't get them out of their get out of that. <laughs> if they've done it wrong, they're like, I don't know what to do. Yeah, I know. I mean, I I should probably be more careful, but I'm you know. You're just I'm, doing it, you just don't know that you're doing it. Yeah, maybe. consciously doing it. And you mess it up when like things are complex. But that's okay. You have the capacity to be able to step back and figure that out. Most people don't know what to do once they've messed something up. You know, once they mess it up, they're like, I don't know what to do. It's like this frozen feeling, right? Yeah, I and I enjoy the process of finding the forms and yeah, maybe. doing more measuring than you think. Yeah, maybe. Definitely. Otherwise, you'd be having a nightmare of the time. I've been telling this to people lately. How much I think we actually do know without knowing that we know it. Um, and a great example is for any of you who've ever done my 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 drawing class with the lily. In fact, I think I've got it here. Show it to you. Yep. So if you take a look at this, what direction is the sun coming from? Can you answer that? Upper, upper left. Upper left. Anybody? Is that obvious? Does that seem pretty clear to everybody? Yeah. yeah. So how do you know that the sun is in the upper left? Because it's bright, bright or on that side. But and yeah, I can see, yeah. And you right. can see the shadow. So, Here's what's really interesting. Any person can answer the question where the light's coming from. Most people cannot tell you why. Most people cannot answer why. They say weird things like, well, um, the flowers turned in a funny direction. The petals are big. The I mean, I get all kinds of answers, but nobody really knows. And I'm like, hello, it's because the lightest area is nearest the sun, right? So what that tells you is that we all have more of a visual sense than we think, but we do not have the language to describe what we know, right? And having the language to describe what you know makes you learn it better. Like, let's see. Uh-uh, Paul. No. Honey, this is one half. This is another half. These are the same size. If you look at your bird, you made your bird taller so that it would fit your longer tail. These two things are exactly the same size. Okay. Top to bottom. Please make the, the bottom where the feet are, which is the lowest point, the same height as the top. And then the width is half. Are you, is that making sense to you or do I need yeah, to? Yeah, no, it, it makes that? sense. It's just that. Um... Okay. Okay. Your heads, you're just needing to focus. You're doing something I haven't seen you done in a long time, which is continuing to extend things down to fit 
what you've already drawn rather than That's, uh, the correct proportions. I haven't seen you do that in a while. I think my bird is a little bit too skinny. Well, you know, Diana, the halfway point, the bird is <laughs> just check it. Yeah. It probably is, but I'll send you my bird. Are you going to make me check it? Because you're not going to? No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm sorry, I'm just kidding. No, 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 no. I, I'm doing it kind of impressionistic. Well, everybody's doing an impressionistic job. So don't, <laughs> that's not like it. That's what we're all doing. <laughs> all right, Rollo, let's see here. So Rollo, the only thing, oh yeah, I guess I did draw it a little bit at an angle. Okay. I'm not it's gonna- It's fine too much at an angle though. Yeah. I think I, it, I, you know, I can't really tell I'm drawing at an angle because I'm trying to work around this this dang computer. So the computer is smack in the middle of my uh, drawing, but I see it. That works. This works. Yep, that works. I've just changed something, which is just to. Yep. I made the angle on the back of it less because it was too fat. Yep, yep, yep. And those too rounded. It was too rounded. At the back. I suddenly realized as soon as I sent it in that. It's interesting when you see the photo and you're instead of looking yeah. at the picture, you're looking at your photo and then you go, oh. Um, he's all right, Diana. Portions look pretty. Oh, except that, Diana, look at the head. Yeah, yeah. The head yeah. is leaning out away yeah. from. Yeah. You have your head kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I, see. I see it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so actually his width is all right, but his head was pulled into yeah. right. And then of course, the next step, Rollo's got there already. I'm gonna quickly sketch it in. It's actually interesting how, apart from the head, there's quite a lot of straight lines. Is what? Oh yeah, absolutely. But you think it's all gonna be rounded, but it's actually not. No, 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 no. It's almost always all curved lines, virtually all curved lines are basically just kind of a series of straight lines. I was also going to say, just based on what you were saying before about the light, um, do you know what uh, anamnesis is? What's, what's that? Anamnesis, it was yeah. a, uh, Socrates uh, theory that was um, written about by Plato. No, 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 tell me. And it's about the fact that you know everything in your head already. It's just about unlocking it. Yes, that's exactly so, right. That's so exactly as you were saying right. before about that people know where the light's coming from, but they don't know why. Right. And then, but that once, they, once you explain it, then they, they know it better. Well, and it's like you make it conscious, right? What we know, we find language for, we describe. We know that's exactly it. And what is it called? An anamnesis. Anamnesis. I have seen it happen so often, Rollo, that I'm like, I can predict it in a group. I'm like, I know what you're all going to say. <laughs> I know it because it's amazing how many people. And by the way, notice the different sizes of these things. We figured out this is a hawthorn berry. These are hawthorn berries. They look huge. Yeah. Because this little guy is so small. I kept trying to take a picture of a robin when I was at home. I should send you some of my pictures from when I was in the UK. So I've taken lots of nature and cows. I would love it. Maybe we can paint some of them. Yeah, I kept trying to get this little robin and it just didn't happen because it was too flitty. They do that. Yeah, please do. Uh, somebody in the Friday group uh, in Europe just sent this fantastic set of, did you see it, Diana? Yeah. 
fantastic cat, a set of cats from Cyprus. Oh, yeah, but it wasn't one of them I thought was good enough to paint. Um, I hadn't looked at it for painting purposes. Yeah, no, I, oh, I they were like they're more like cute, cute tourist pictures. It's not like posing that you can use. And not good lights and darks. Yeah. Okay. But they were cute cats, of course. I just saw cute cats. I didn't have time to check it out for good subjects. I should probably, uh, as we go along, I'll, I'll show you guys the subjects that we talked about to learn about why, what is a good subject and what's not a good subject in drawing. I think that can be helpful. Yeah, it is. Yeah, to talk about. And notice that each of these little hawthorn berries has a kind of white rough at the bottom and a white, a glaring white spot. So you should mark that with a trying with a little triangle so we don't paint on it. Uh, had you been home a lot before you were home this uh, last month, Rob? Uh, not really, no. So how was that to be home besides the obvious? Was it weird? Uh, yeah, it was very, uh, I mean, it was the longest I think I've been at home since I've been like 22 or something. So. I can imagine. Sending you a picture that I took. What? Right. I, it wasn't a fun reason to be back, but was it nice to see all your relatives? Oh, look at that. Yeah, no, it was, it was lovely, actually, yeah. And spend time with them as well. Lovely. Yeah. Now, this might be a nice watercolor subject. The bee. It on looks the like it has a set of eyes there. Maybe we'll do that. Oh, my God. Wow. Annie, you're bugging me. I'm sending some more through. Why not? Oh, that's a nice one too. Apple trees, <laughs> kind of idyllic looking. Yeah, I have a whole new outtake on Europe. Um, now that I've got, I, I own a Much digital better, camera. Paul. Much better, Paul. I <laughs> so go ahead. Now, although we can't see much of the eye, there is a little tiny white spot. You'll want to. I'm cheating. I'm cheating in the berries where they not are. Can I ask a very basic question? Yeah. Leah? <clears throat> um, would we do the background first in this case? Because it's sort okay. of like a wash. Nope. We'll do the bird first and then build in the background. Okay. We'll do the bird first. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, that, you know, there are people who do that. I find that to be kind of premature. I find that like, it makes more sense to me to work on my subject, right? The main focus of my painting and then make decisions about my background based yeah. on uh, how my subject is turning out. Like, I don't generally know when I start, like, how well is, what, what is this, what are we going to need? That feels like a middle stage step for me. Yeah, and I'm, I always try to work on the background and the subject simultaneously. Well, but of course, but you can't like paint the background and the subject at the same time. I mean, you've got to put one in at a time and you're never asking me about the background really until you've got the subject in, blocked in. No, I, but I always put it in regardless of what color I put in. I always put it sure. in. Sure, that toning it is different, but I still yeah. think in, and particularly when you're with watercolor. Yeah, I mean, that's different, obviously. It, yeah. It, yeah, like you absolutely don't want- Yeah, yeah, you can't, you can't mess as I do. You can't, yeah. I mean, sure, you can tone your background, but yeah, really yeah. truthfully, no. listen, my whole background, by the time I've laid my underpainting down, I have, my whole canvas is covered with paint, but I don't really think about my background until I've laid in my subject. 
Johnny, you are yeah. very, very. I don't know until I until I kind of work the subject. But I know people who work the opposite. They tend to be people who have not trained as painters, who have taught themselves. And uh, to me, it seems like kind of an amateur move. But like, you know, I don't know. Like that's kind of a random, that's a kind of a gross overstatement. But it's yeah, when I, I mean, when I went to art school, uh, we would be so scolded if we didn't work on the background simultaneously. Uh, if we just concentrated on, on the subject. Even in watercolor? Well, not in watercolor, not in watercolor, but in- but I mean, what, but you know, Diana, like toning is like a different thing. That's not really taking care of the background. That's just toning. Yeah. Like getting, that's not the same thing as dealing with the background. That's not really making a decision about the background. That's just getting some paint down yeah. on the canvas so you can start, that's not doing, dealing with the background at yeah. all. I, I see what you're saying. You see what I'm saying? That's yeah. what I mean. I mean, I see people who full on paint the background before they paint their subject. And that seems weird to me. Like, it just seems like a not, not the, it seems kind of a backwards way of doing it. All right. So let's get our. Can I send you over to someone, Sunny? I, we, I could sell you tonight. Is Sunny bothering you tonight? She wants my attention all the time right now. Right. But she's much better than she used to be, so I shouldn't complain. Um, maybe you're just tired. <laughs> you're allowed. You're totally allowed. Um, I scrubbed off my little disc. Oh, wait, I can probably turn this around so you guys can see it. There we go. So my, um, cause I'm working small. I'm gonna take a little tiny flat brush. This is the normal brush I would use for kind of, for this kind of a demo. But I'm gonna work a little smaller because this is a smaller subject. And as usual, I think we should start with darks um, because the darks are, if we, because it's harder to mess them up. So uh, my basic dark, which I'm just gonna return to you. This is my dark. You don't have to do it if you don't want to, but I like mixing ultramarine blue and burnt umber together to make a dark kind of a warm, earthy, dark. So I'm flipping that's, that. That's, that's my go-to black too. Is it? It's such a nice, warm, cold. And I don't, oh wait, you guys can't really see this here. Hold on, let me, yeah, there we go. And I'm testing on the outside of my paper here so I can see how it looks. And because this is quite dark, I think we can go just right in. And I can even pretty much go, I'm kind of trying to leave a little bit of white for the eye, but I may not be fully successful at that and that's okay. And you see how light it is, how, and I'm doing it everywhere. There's kind of a dark. Sunny, leave me alone. So you can already see that this dark is going to need to be, I'm going to have to go over it again, but that's okay. It's good to have a dark that you can kind of darken as you go along. I think we can also use this for the feet because the feet are gray. You can only see one foot here. Nice one. What I like about this, uh, the reason that I like to do it this way 
particularly with watercolor, is that we're building, and actually with everything, if you start with the darks, you can see that the darks are already interacting with the lights to create the basic block in shape. I want to paint, I think we should paint that bee next week on the flower. What do you Let me see more where that came from. <laughs> What's that? Oh yeah, send me a couple more. But what do you guys think? I think that's a neat one. What the bee one? Yeah. It may be a bit complex with the bee. I don't know. Yeah, that's true. It's kind of small. Well, keep sending stuff over. I bet you we find something to paint from your group. And if you want, I will. I will here. Hold on. See. Write it down here. That's burnt umber. What was the uh, the black again? It was ultramarine blue and red. No, oh, burnt umber and ultramarine blue. I'm writing it down here, and I'll send it over so you have it. Ah, darn it! I got my here. I'll do this first. It's more, it's falling down. This is my all time, as Diana and I were both discussing, this is kind of both our all time favorite dark mix because it's yeah. a warm dark, it's easy to layer on top, it's easy to adjust one way or the other once you get it. You can make things kind of cooler if you want by mixing other darks, but yeah. It's kind of like a uh, kind of like a mossy dirt color. I just sent over the mix. Oh, well, how's everybody doing tonight? Good, good. Uh, Tired? Yeah. yeah i just like I, I almost found an advertiser but then he got a little cagey he was he is he, his head got because he's the ceo of his own company so he was like um talk to my marketing manager i was like oh god yeah. he's an engineer so you know i was i was talking to him and then all of a sudden he, burned, he went from engineer to ceo very quickly they tend to do that nowadays How about you? And Diana, you said you're just busy. busy. I'm just, you know, I have to find honorees for the next event. Did you get Amanda Gorman? Uh, not, not yet. I'm, I spoke to them again today. They seem to think that February is like uh, light years away. I guess I shouldn't talk about that on the recording uh, about what who we are. Well, that's the okay. thing. <laughs> Leah Coco is here. I'm gonna go grab her. Okay. Yeah. Well, how about you? How you doing? Me? Yeah. Yeah, I'm doing okay. Much better than last week. Yeah. Good. 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 Uh, did you enjoy the the long award show? I did. Yes. I I I was trying to um, catch up with George Panaccio, but he ran away. He his name is Pinacchio. Oh, is it Pinacchio? Oh, yeah. I never, because I see him all the time, but I, I never actually get to say his He's name. one of the nicest guys around. He's I know, one. I'm always on red carpets next door to him. Oh. One of the first people I met here. Yeah, he, he's, he's the nicest person if you ever, I mean, if you need anything. He is, he is, so darn nice. That's cool. Yeah. Um, when you guys get in the dark, I'm thinking there's this kind of brown. I'm thinking it's like burnt sienna with a touch of blue. Maybe. We'll see. 
I'm kind of working on the browns in his little chest there. You can see there's two levels of dark. There's kind of this super black, then there's this kind of browny bit, and then there's this kind of golden bit. That's like, so it's like light, it's like one, two, three, four. We were gonna label the darks. I'm just trying to see what is the, I might just have blue and burnt sienna. That might be it. Let's see what happens here. Let's see. No, that's kind of nice, actually. Sunny, bunny, keep me alone. I have never heard you say that to that dog. But she's so persistent right now. She, I mean, she, she could be petted twenty four seven if, if you had time. She just wants attention. Yes, the pandem pandemic has been good for her. <clears throat> so to me, I see that this, this darker brown here is a burnt sienna plus a little bit of blue. So let me send that over. Burnt sienna. Just a touch of blue, yeah? Yeah, just a touch. Well, it's interesting. I'm using more than a touch, but yeah, you want more, you want it to be more brown than blue so that you're mixing kind of a dark and then together it makes this kind of funky oh. yeah you might want to it's kind of a slaty color yeah there we go so here it's like burnt sienna I think that's pretty close. We can layer like kind of a slightly more brown color on top. There we go. So a lot like burnt umber. You'll notice I almost never put a straight color in. There's almost always a mix involved. Because otherwise it gets flat. Right, it's too boring, right? So. No, oh, yeah, it definitely should have more orange in it, at least on the first layer. And you can see as I lay this down that my dark is not yet dark enough. You can see that because right now it's the same value as my lighter brown here. So I'm ultimately totally going to have to go in. And then I think we'll just add a little. Gambosia yellow ochre. Let's see what happens when I do that. Um, yep. I'd say to that burnt sienna blue mix, if you add just a touch of yellow ochre and a lot of water, it's, it's too green. Maybe just burnt sienna. Yellow ochre. Let's see that. Oh, that's too yellow. I'm going to change my water. I'll be right back. Okay. We do need a little bit of blue. You are so clumsy. You are so clumsy, girl. Maybe can yellow. That's kind of too. I'm experimenting with the lighter yellow. I'm almost wondering if it's like a yellow and a white. Yeah, maybe that's what it is.
So you want to be really careful on this layer in here. It's pretty light. Uh, yep, I don't want to do that. Um, dang, color is that? I'm taking burnt sienna, a little bit of lemon yellow, and I'm lightening it with a lot of water so that you can barely. See it so it's kind of washing on super light. Yep. Yellow ochre, a little bit of cad yellow. And there's a little bit of that kind of fluttering in here. And you see a touch down here. So I'm back. There should be excellent. The rest of this should stay white. It, so looks, very, also, it looks very charming, though. He is a little charming. It's cute. Um, After having done that big course, I feel like just doing small things for a while. Yeah, I bet. I bet you do. So we're going to have to definitely darken everything here, except for maybe this yellowy area. And we'll probably layer it a little bit of dark, kind of through it a little bit. But right now, I think that's good shape. We're in good shape. So this is burnt sienna, uh, yellow ochre or gamboge and a lot of water, it's very light. And notice I kind of came down here. And then you can either darken with another layer of burnt umber and ultramarine blue, or you can start working on the berries or the background. Like this would now be the time, actually, I think we should darken first. So now I'm doing a second layer of dark once it's dry. I may decide on a different dark mix for my top layer. We'll see. We'll see how well this does. It looks pretty blue on top. Mine does? No, the in the picture. Oh, in the picture. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Good eye there. I might leave it at this point, go to my bigger brush and start playing around with backgrounds. So here's where you could go the direction that the, the painting is, that the drawing is. Oh, you know what? Actually, let's put the berries in first. So the berries are gonna be, they're very orangey, but they're not just like cadmium red, right? So I get a mix, a little bit of quinacridone the warm and cool red together. And in fact, I'm going to take alizar and crimson and cadmium red and mix them together. And I'm going to go around the white dots with this kind of warmish cool color. I'm going to add my dark on in this particular case later. I'll show you what color we'll mix for that. Hmm. 
this. Well, I might even add a little yellow because it's almost got some of these berries almost have an orangey cast to them, particularly on their light side. Uh, what colors are you using for the berries actually? Sorry, I wasn't following. Uh, sorry, quinacridone red. Uh, sorry, alizar and crimson, cadmium red, and a touch of yellow. And I'm working around the orange. Uh, I'm working around the white spots. So I'm going to start with one layer that's going to lighten, and then I'm going to go back over with other with a thinner brush to get the darker areas of each berry in. So you with a kind of a mix of a warm and a cool red. Okay. By the way, what direction is the light coming from? Uh, almost straight on, I think. From the the front right. Right. How can yeah. you tell? The berries. The berries, exactly. Yeah. Hey, the language for describing this is awesome. Great work. Because the light is going, it's hard to see on the bird, although his chest is quite bright. Yeah, his oh. chest is. So you can see that. And also as things, as the feathers turn away, they get a little bit darker. It's definitely gonna get darker in here too. I just thought it would be good to get the berries in. And let's see, now I'm using that skinny brush again. And the wood is kind of like, I know it's kind of a ready. What happens if I mix Alizon and Crimson and a little bit of green? Is that the color? No, not really. Not enough. Let's see. Uh, that's too, well, maybe that's. Let's try Alizar and Crimson. I'm playing around with some colors for the bark, which has a kind of pretty red tone. Yeah, it does. But it's not exactly red. It's whatever we mix, it's going to need a little bit of green in it. Yeah. Um, that's not true. Let's see. It's but it is a lot, it's a lot of burnt sienna, isn't it? Yeah, I'm I, yeah, but when I mix burnt sienna, burnt sienna itself is too orange. Oh. And alizarin crimson is a little too red. No, that's not bad, actually. Hold on. I mixed alizarin crimson and burnt sienna together. Okay. Now that actually is kind of nice. So we might start with Alizar and Crimson and Burnt Sienna to get the base down. And then really honestly, probably pure cadmium red for the stems. When you talk about the stems, you talk about the stems for the berries? Berries, yes. Sorry, the berry stems as opposed to. And even if this looks a little too red, we can shift it over yeah. on the darker. Yeah. And can you tell me what the yellow is, Leah? Is it just? It's um, yellow ochre and um, a lot of water <laughs> and uh, a little bit of, of cadmium yellow, too. And then this background is interesting because like kind of a purpley mauvey color. Yeah. Start with mixing purple. Huh. 
Did I just get it? Yeah, mean? purple and um, even cobalt blue in it. Yeah, I don't have any of that. We'll have to be ultramarine. Um, purple and then yellow. Yeah, yellow it is. And then yellow. Uh, Alizar and crimson, ultramarine blue, and then maybe Gamboge. Try that. And if you want it to be redder, maybe even. You know, I have this feeling that little burnt sienna got in there. I wonder if that would help. Ooh. All right, I'm going to start this over. <laughs> I want to like have a clean slate. I think I got too many colors mixed in there. I might have got the color right, but I don't know what was in there. Let's try this again. Alizar and Crimson. Ultramarine Blue for a purple. And then I'm trying Gamboge. Mine is all over right now. But it will get there. Yeah. Um, not too bad. It's kind of one of those things that you'll be constantly adjusting, but it's basically a purple that you mix with a yellow. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, you guys can pick honestly any color you want. For the background, yeah. If you want to make the background like light blue, that might be better than trying to mix this bizarre purpley color. Mine is too. I haven't worked on the bird yet, so because I was so busy with the background. <laughs> You don't have much to do with your do for your bird. He's mostly done. The bird is very simple. So well, that's where I'm at. Let's see. Yeah. I like that orangey face you have for your bird. Yeah. I haven't decided if I'm going to do the back berries too. I think I think I just have the berries in the front. Okay. Um, the oh, get the one. Oh, yeah. As long as you have the one under his foot, you know they say things. Yeah. I've heard this. I don't know if you've ever heard this, like as an organizational concept, but that you should never have groups of even numbered things in a in a composition. Have you heard that? It should oh, yeah. be. Three oh, yeah. or one or five or seven, but it yeah. should never be like two or four. Yeah, I know. So there's five berries there. I mean, I don't know if it's really true. That 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 strikes me as one of those things that might be fun to just challenge. But what does it do? The word it gets too geometrical if you have yeah, too patterny. Yeah. Or much have some green to that. What's that? I was just wondering about what to do the um, the branch as, but I think I'm going to add a bit of green to my brownie one. Although I've already done. exactly, I kind of just went orange on the first layer, and then I was planning to go back in with a darker color and really um, work that. If that makes any sense, yeah, I'm not sure I'm like really thrilled with this color. But the poor bird doesn't show any face, any eye. No, but you have to, really... there is just a little glimmer there. Yep. Yeah. So now that we have kind of a background in, you can see that the issue is that now we have to start pushing our other things darker, right? Our subjects darker. Uh, the branch and the berries.
So now I'm going in with, for the dark of the berries, I'm mixing alizarin and crimson and viridian green to make a dark that's kind of ready dark. <clears throat> and I'm doing that just simply because. Yes. Yes. Right, because, 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 the wonderful things that he does. <laughs> so I'm trying to add in some of the darks and the berries, and I'll probably use some of the same color. Um, for the branches to the Once I've got my dark in, I can go back in with a little bit of more cadmium red, maybe even a little bit of orange. So I can mix, if you've got orange, you can just go in with orange. I do actually have orange. Still preserving that light spot. make those berries have a little bit more life. You can layer with watercolor, which is nice about it. But primarily, I really want to get the branches, this branch darker, particularly on the bottom. You'll see it's kind of darker on the bottom. So I'm mixing burnt umber, sorry, burnt sienna and ultramarine blue for that. Just going to go for a quick cigarette break. Okay. Oh, I've done so far. All right, send it over. Let me get into the WhatsApp group. <laughs> cute, Diana. Huh? He's cute. Yeah, it is a cute bird. He's cute, right? Yeah. Cute. Tired. You need to paint cute things. Cute things are fun to paint when you're tired. Baby rhinoceroses are always good. A baby rhinoceros, oh heavens. Maybe elephants. Yeah, it's like little hands. Yeah, we might break out our gouache. I like those cute, those cute things that uh, they look so cute and they turn out having like huge teeth and can. That kind of cute thing, eh? Yeah. Like my dog. <laughs> No, our dogs don't care. Your dog's a big softy. He has big teeth. She has oh, very nice, Rollo. Good, good, good. Yep, it's good. Background. Yeah, I might recommend that, Rollo, that you could try to do this pinky background, or you could just do it like blue or something more straightforward. Might look better uh, for this composition. I mean, heed my warning. This is my warning. <laughs> I'm not sure that looks so great. I quite like the colors they so. <laughs> What is yeah. that? Very cute. And it's it's simplified in a nice way. Mm -hmm. um, I'm actually thinking I might try blue over this background color, but I want to make sure that I've got, you know, I've got this kind of crazy turquoise thing happening. What if I yeah. Where's right, yours, Paul? I'll send it over in a second. Actually, kind of laying a little blue on top doesn't hurt at all. 
no, this is a disaster. I can't find my cigarettes. What? <laughs> Found them. It's, a, it's an intervention. <laughs> a divine intervention. There you go. Yeah. Oh, he's coming along, Paul, very nicely. Nice. That's nice, nice. Good. My real issue is I got a little bit too dark under here. So I think I need to go in and put in dark on the branch. I need to darken something. Here, like this got a little bit, if I darken this, Maybe these things will look, maybe this bird will pop forward a little bit. Yeah, that helped. Now, the other thing we can try doing is laying a little bit of watercolor with no water, just the paint to see if you can brighten things. And if all is lost, we may go to gouache to try and push a couple of things a little bit lighter because gouache will allow us to layer a little bit more. Otherwise, I'm finding myself having to darken a lot more the branch, a lot more than I wanted to. So I went a little Lay up. Oh. What? What, hon? Uh, the background? What color did you do the background? I'm not going to tell you. I want you to pick a simple color, like blue or green or something. Okay. Yeah. And then the branch, is that is that burnt umber or burnt sienna? So I almost always tell you to mix. It's um, Alizar and Crimson, Burnt Sienna, and a little bit of blue. Oh, wow, how cool, okay. I'll definitely try that one. Yeah. Sorry, I, I get so caught up in the, uh, in the painting that I like completely, it doesn't even register that you, you told us everything. Oh, no, that's okay, honey. I know you're working on, I don't expect you all to pick it, pick it up. Uh, I, I don't expect you to know everything. One of the things that I'm actually doing right now is taking my brush with water over the top to lighten my background. So I've got my brush, I put water over it. Yeah, there we go. Because I went to dark with my background. And, oh, that looks so much better. So this area had gotten too dark which meant I couldn't really distinguish between my branch, my, you know, the bottom of my bird and, um, and the leg. Um, so I just actually went over and lightened everything by taking water, brushing it on, and then dabbing it off just to pull off a little bit more color so it's not so intense. I think that helps. And I think that's a great argument for making this just a simple blue color or even leaving it white with just a couple splashes of blue. Like there's no reason you have to cover the whole thing. And now I'm just gonna come back in and keep working my browns in here. I might even go over One second to put up on mute. Yep. Yeah. 
also might do one more layer of the dark on top of the bird. And, and now there is, he does have a little bit of a fluffy, not too crazy, but a slightly feathery hairstyle. Yeah, he has a punk hairstyle. He's got a punk, yeah, he's, like he's got a mohawk or something. <laughs> we are just totally maligning this little bird because he's too cute. His only crime, he was too cute. Mm. Not happy. Not happy. With the bird? No, oh, with the berries. Berries. Um, you want to send it to me? Or do you think you know what you need to do? No, I know what I need to do. I just annoy that it doesn't work out straight away. There we go. Ah, you guys have a little mohawk. It's so cute. He does have a mohawk. Cute. <laughs> now you'll notice I also went in here where the brown meets the yellow and kind of did a feathery, a slightly feathery shape here because there are feathers that are kind of coming in. So it's not just a straight background, it's kind of more of a feathery background. I think that that, that was a good decision. Hmm. Yeah, we might do a little gouache touch up here. Sorry about that. That's my friend that does, uh, he's the exec producer on Dancing with the Stars, so he never has a chance to speak to me. So he was calling now? Yeah. So yeah. There, there is the George Pinocchio connection again, huh? Yeah, I know. He has to be there every week. Yeah. Cool man. Yeah. He's a trooper. I mean, even Andrew says, oh, my God, you know, like he gets so annoyed with uh, everyone taking it so seriously. Yeah. He's just like, come on. It's just a game show. Yeah. And people get very upset and distraught on staff and. I mean, this new he was telling me that this new. Um, Zoom thing has become a real problem. Because? Because um, when he's doing production, yeah, like he's got a PA, mm -hmm. and the PA uh, keeps saying to him, you know, like someone will call up from like war.
yeah but he's like I don't want zoom calls I can just call them like yeah I, I can just call them back like it's a, it's really not that complicated no. um that's how things used to work yeah and they don't have to be hard yeah and they don't have to be half hour sessions no um so he's he gets very frustrated with this sort of dependency on modern technology that's been going on. Well, Zoom calls take up more time. Yeah. They sure do. <coughs> oh, that's looking nice, Diana. Ha. <coughs> Oh, we'll see. I mean, you got COVID there. <coughs> What's that? <coughs> you got COVID. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I've been tested twice. You I know have... who got COVID, right? No, I do not have COVID. Not no, yet. you know who has COVID? Who? Aaron Rodgers has COVID. Who's Aaron Rodgers? The, uh, the Green Bay uh, Packers quarter, star Hall of Fame quarterback. Really? Yeah. yeah. Apparently, he's I... never been vaccinated, and uh, the NFL says, like, they asked the NFL, they said, no, we don't consider him vaccinated. Uh, but the he coach, said... The coach wouldn't, obviously would not comment. He lied about it. He said he was vaccinated. Yeah, he, I think he said he was vaccinated. Not, is he an anti-vaxxer? Um, I, I don't, don't think I so, because he, he said he was vaccinated. No, he said he was vaccinated, but I guess he just doesn't privately. He doesn't really want to get back. Didn't want to get vaccinated. So he is an anti-vaxxer. Yeah, I guess. If he doesn't want to get up. Well, dummies. All right. Well, I mean, I guess well, he'll be okay. The problem with COVID is it doesn't kill enough people. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't like kill enough people. Jesus Christ. <laughs> It, this could be a fantastic way to get rid of the really dumbest people in our community. It would be fantastic, but no. You know, like for example, the LA Sheriff's Department. Yeah. Uh, half of their staff uh, could be sacked because they're refusing to get the vaccine. And when you think about that and you think LA is like 70% vaccinated and yet the people that protect and serve refuse to get vaccinated yeah it's all a bit worrying really isn't it yeah it shows you who is the smartest shop is not seeing the drawers right yeah right. yes very well put diana very well put um so i'm also going to say if you have gouache now might be a good time to pull out your gouache. I'm kind of waiting for this to dry. I feel like I've layered so much paint on that I can't get my thing dark enough. So, we're oh, yeah, yeah. gonna pull some gouache out. I guess I have to work a little bit on the poor bird. I'm just gonna lay a piece of paper down here. Wash on it. So I'm going to grab a little bit of white wash. Yeah. And then maybe. Just curiosity. I have black wash. What do I do? I never use black, but for some reason, I always mix my black, but for some reason, I'm kind of intrigued by this. So if you're wanting to go back in and kind of push out your whites here, you see you can do that with gouache. You can also try this with wet watercolor paint. Um, white watercolor paint, sorry, dry watercolor paint that does not have it. But look at what that gouache does. It just like, and I may want to like come in here and get rid of this like pencil. 
marks maybe dripped in a little white. Oh. Also, I'm interested to see what happens if I add black on top. Oh, yeah, that's it. So your gouache can be a kind of final layer if you have it. If you don't have it, you can try using, look at what that is doing. The gouache is a little bit more uh, opaque, meaning you cannot see through it. Yeah. Well, that solved a lot of problems. Hmm. I even add a little bit of orange wash. I'm adding a little bit of orange gouache to the occasion just to see if I can sort of brighten up my berries just a little bit. The problem with watercolor is that it's hard, to, uh, you can lose brightness fairly easily. Oh, yeah, there we go. So I don't know if you, can, you guys can see this, but I'm adding a little bit of orange gouache onto the light part of my berries, and I think it's working out pretty well. There we go. Yep. Not too much, just in kind of the light area, the lightest areas. There. Okay. The flash can kind of help you Actually, I make a very nice gray by mixing orange and black and white wash. Do you guys have wash? No. Nope. All right. You can use wet watercolor. See if it will do. Uh, sorry, dry watercolor. I keep saying wet. What I mean is watercolor that has it, you know, that's just right out of the tube. Sometimes that can work. Similarly. I'm looking for a, a cheap uh, wash set. Did you find one? No, I haven't found one yet. Maybe I should look online. I'm gravitating more and more to getting things online now. Yeah. Kill them small businesses, huh? <laughs> well, no, it's just they're, I mean, I'm support. I end up going to Michael's and Blick most of the time. I mean, it's, it just ends up that way for some reason. There's a local art store in my neighborhood that I swear I'm at like every day, you know, like the way you go to shop for groceries if you're in Europe, <laughs> you know, like every day. Uh, because it's just a mile away, it's so awesome. Mm. Oh, back up to you. Okay. 
Keep using. Wash to kind of thin out the beak, which I need to accidentally dry. Oh, yeah, and I'm improving my color by adding a little orange on top. Orange wash. There we go. Nice. Brother, when you get a chance, send me a couple more pigs. I want the nature ones. Mm -hmm. I want to find something that might be good and not too hard for um, a watercolor class next week. Okay. I like how this is going. Oh, missed one. A berry? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, it dripped. Oh, shit. That's OK. I think I've got it. I hate when that happens. Take your safety blanket out. Your bl yeah, security blanket. Yeah, get your blankie. Get your blankie. <laughs> in our old age homes, we're all going to be talking about our, our blankie and no one's going to know what we're talking about. <laughs> Get your blankie. <laughs> hmm. It's also nice is that I can add kind of the white parts of the branches back on with the gouache too. You can also try this with your white watercolor. Oh, yeah. Right. See how I'm kind of brushing this on to make it a little bit more right on the top. That I feel like it's also looking at well. We're going to be in watercolor most likely for the rest of the year. So if you guys can get your hands on a couple of a small kids gouache set, I think you'll find it'll really like support your watercolor work. How do you spell it? Gouache, G-O-U-A-U. No. Oh. Gouache. Yeah. G-O-U, yeah, there's a, there's a U in there somewhere. G-O-U-A-C-H-E. Actually, if you want to get a hand hands on a cheap gouache set, 
I actually bought uh, this, not that I ever going to use it, but I bought like a, a set with these bottles. Uh, if you look, uh, they are like, they have that at, um, what's its name? Oh, us, Diana, go ahead. Uh, at uh, the uh, dollar store, you can find it. Hold it up, hold it up. Oh, it's, it's just like, I just bought a set like this at the dollar store. But what's the, are you, is that not tempera paint? Is that tempera? Yeah, it actually is. It's tempera. That's a little bit different than gouache. It's, yeah. uh, uh, it's a little bit, I don't even, I, I'd have to look up to see what the difference is. But, but you know, yeah, tempera is, um, tempera is uh, egg and linseed oil. Yeah. Yeah. And um, gouache is like water color, just more solid pigment. Right. Less water in the mix. So mm -hmm. gouache is nice because it it is a kind of um, it's got a little bit more opacity, so you can layer lights on easily. Yeah. But but I know they have those cheap. So it's like, it's like a person, a painter would have, like a professional would have every color in gouache. In other words, no, like, you can what? mix that too. You can mix that too. Yeah, I only have six colors in gouache. There's mm -hmm. the primaries and the tertiaries. Let's yeah. see. Oh, I like how bright your. Um, you got your, I like how bright, bright you got your, uh, your background, your reds there, Rallo. So now you want to go back in and work because notice how dark this whole area is. It's brown. So you're going to want to kind of darken that inside area. I'm going to take a picture of it up close so you can really see it. I've got the picture here. I'm going to go over Rich. I I went a lot lighter in my background because uh, I didn't want the bird to be overwhelmed by a darker background. Um, but we all have to, you know, it in one color less is more. I have really learned it's not just these white spots that we leave untouched. It's like areas of the paper that are white. Like I think I. If I could do this over again, I probably wouldn't put thing put the the background all over. I'd probably just put it in a couple areas and leave white. Um, and that's because like watercolor, I think it's because watercolor is so expressive as a paint that you need these rest areas that aren't covered. I mean. There's look at even in this background here, there's all this interesting texture going on, which in a way kind of competes with what's happening up here. And I'm going to take some water and try to scrub, scrub out some of the extra marks in the background so that I don't, grabbing my blankie, so that I'm not distracting from the main subject. Yeah, water, one watercolor stroke has so much going on. Interesting. I think that's why people are so obsessed with it because it's so, you can do so much with one stroke. Yeah. Yeah takes a lot of planning it's like you can't you can't paint over and paint over so you have to yeah it's 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 easier to overdo it isn't it yeah so i'm kind of washing out my background so that it's not competing so much with my burden
Oh, Paul, nice. Yeah, nice soft background. Yeah, so, I think I have to go over into the brown a bit. And, and yeah, yeah, yeah. So just get a little bit darker yeah. in there. And also your dark on your on your feather back here needs to be a little go in a little bit more. Okay. Right? Yeah, that's yeah. those are absolutely fixable things, right? Because yeah, yeah. Oh shit. What's up? I just did the mistake. Shit happens. In fact, I I go it came up a little too Hi. <clears throat> so apparently they opened up uh, the they rented the Santa Barbara uh, Mu Museum of Art is opening up now. Oh, it hasn't been open. Or they rent up they did something. They spent a lot of money on it, I think. I read about it in uh, AAA magazine. Have any of you guys been to the the Broad? Yeah. Yeah. I have not. I have. Is it all that? The Beautiful. Yeah. I, I was there opening day. It's a it's a fun modern art museum. Yeah. yeah, it's a vault. It's actually a vault. Like the whole, the entire bottom part is a vault, and they just added like a little box on top for to uh, so it so it's the, like the the display part, and they just rotated around. It's a lot of money in there. Yeah. I bet. Yeah. I haven't been to an art museum since the pandemic. Yeah, they used to, in Pasadena, they used to have like free free Fridays every couple of six months or so. Where you could go and they they would have shuttle buses and you can visit like ten or fifteen is like they have about ten ten or fifteen of them there. Just to, just I to love this. I love the Simon Northen Museum. It's the nicest. Which one? Simon Northen in Pasadena. Or in Simon. Yeah. Is that based on a private collection or a? It might be, it might be. I actually don't know about the ownership. No, you know the uh, you know when you watch the uh, the, the Tournament of Roses parade, there's that big black building with the rose on it. Vaguely. Yeah. That's that's it. Interesting. You guys, these are looking pretty good, by the way. This was, as usual, a little bit more challenging than I thought. We like that. Yeah. <laughs> Good. <laughs> uh -huh. 
always like Marie and I are always saying, oh my God, we picked the hardest. He thought it was easy. And then it turned out to be so hard. <laughs> Uh, what's happening over your way diana well i think it was nicer before <laughs> now that i start putting in details it it is not as much fun well it's interesting this one doesn't really respond well to detail because the light and dark are so light medium and yeah. dark are so yeah i'll show you it's, I'll I'll fix it another day, but <laughs> we're gonna have like a ton of those not finished painting. <laughs> oh, nice, Robo. That's looking great. I need to go for black. So. I love this orangey. I love that you've pushed this orangey. Can you get a little bit darker down in this corner? Because which what? Is going on in my side? I need to. Yeah. Which one? Bottom, that, the bottom left hand corner. Well, where this brown area is, right? Like here? Yeah. Because that's a little bit I darker than I, the orange. I, I overdid it and then used my paper and then I didn't go over it again. Um, I'll do it again now. Yeah. Diana, I think you just need to lighten your background around your birdie a little bit. And then yeah, and I also need to, it, it's a little bit too long in the body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just slightly. Yeah. Maybe bring up the berry a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And that will do it. Leah, yeah. what was the yellow color again? It was uh, ochre, cadmium, and... It was just ochre and cadmium, kind of lightened with water. There, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. there was a touch of blue in there, right? And a little burnt sienna. A little burnt sienna, okay. <laughs> I, I'm going to leave you guys, uh, and I'm going to tackle this tomorrow morning again. Okay. And good luck with everything. All right. You know Thank who you. all your judging needs. Yay. I love <laughs> that. He loves that. Yeah. My boyfriend is a stagehand and he was out of work for like a year and a half and now it's all rolling in as you can imagine at the same time <laughs> he's like so busy in and out i remember we thought he'll never go back to work Well, it's funny, my friend Andrew was complaining to me. Oh, you have no idea. I have to work six days a week, most weeks, doing Dancing with the Stars. And I said, yeah, but you get the entire year off. Yeah, it's, it's like an athlete. Yeah, you got to work really hard for a short period of time. I have to do six or seven weeks uh, for three months of the year, but then you don't have to work for the rest of it. Yeah. That to me, I say, is worth it. 
as opposed to my our work, I mean, I gotta say, my work never stops. I am like insanely busy right now. And I just went through like the biggest shows of my year and I'm still busy. Like there's still fallout from all of that. Like it's amazing how busy it is. I don't imagine being able to have a break. I don't know. I don't know when that's gonna happen. And Diana's the same. And I'm sure it's not like the news ever stops. No. Yeah, I know. Uh, are you back in the office yet, Rolo? Are you guys back? No, in the not yet. Not until January. Okay. I'm slightly annoyed by it all, but because I would actually prefer to be at the office, I think now. Right. I remember you saying that. It's just everybody else seems to think that they don't want to be at the office, so um, I have to go along <laughs> with the guild. <laughs> well, you're all going to have to go back to the office eventually. It's going to well, happen. Jesus, can you guys believe two hours has gone by? I know. I just noticed just that. Is that it? It's almost time. Okay. Isn't that weird? I mean, it doesn't. It didn't feel like that. It doesn't feel like that. It's good because I only have six percent on my on your computer. <laughs> so, Paul, yeah. how is the new screen working for the? Oh, it's wonderful. I love it. Awesome. It's. Uh, I mean, it just. It's great. The only thing is I start it, I have a little antenna on it. So I start watching TV sometimes on it and that's, but yeah, it's, it's great because it just, the detail, I mean, the detail, I don't have to squint my eyes and I don't have to look at, you know, see this, this demo is really big. Yeah. Yeah. It's just the demo just doesn't, for some reason, it just doesn't, uh, you, it's better with detail. It just works better with detail as that's opposed awesome. to being at the other screen. No, I, I think that's absolutely true. I think that's cool. Okay. I haven't changed very much, but just made it a bit darker. Let's see. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, these are adorable, you guys. <laughs> I love them. Paul, where are you at in yours? We've got another like five minutes or so. Uh, let's see, Rado, what would I tell you? Yeah, to let me send it over to you. Oh, I think I would do more of the yellow at the bottom, actually. Yeah, and look at the shape of his. Not quite as rounded as it should be. Get a little bit more darkness, thickness on the wing here. Right, right here. Yeah, I'm trying. Uh, okay. Oh, he's adorable. Nice yeah, work. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Down here. I like how you got the dark in. There you go. Now you're on your game. Oh, thanks. <laughs> so, you guys, how do you feel at the end? Can, do you remember how you felt at the beginning of class? Like, do you notice any difference between how you feel at the beginning of class and how you feel now? Uh, uh, yeah. What's I, feel, I feel at the beginning of class, I felt like it was it was uh, going to be like an, an easy tackle. But now it just it seems like I've I mean, I feel like I've I've learned a lot from it, like where things are are situated and how how they where they you go a little scattered at the beginning of class i noticed i can always tell because it shows up in your drawing you're like kind of all over the place with the drawing really? uh, but you see more focus now um Rado, what about you are you glad you came to class uh yeah yeah i'm feeling much more focused as well yeah it's interesting isn't it how focusing on something like this can make you feel like so much better about whatever it is. 
that's like, even if you're feeling kind of meh, when you get started, getting into it is really great. Yeah, this is looking really good. Let's stop.